Hey guys, welcome to my channel Linux King. My name is Salman Francis and today's video is going to be a fun video because we will be protecting our remote machine with Google Authenticator. And Google Authenticator is used for uh, dual authentication. So we will be requiring some verification code before we log into our machine with SSH. Please remember that I'm using CentOS 8 machine for our remote machine and local machine is going to be Linux Mint. So without further ado, let's start. As always, I have created some notes and let's take a look at our notes. So dual auth for SSH using Google Authenticator. Prerequisites, uh, please make sure you have downloaded Google Authenticator app for your cell phone. Uh, for example, if you're using iOS, uh, you can use Apple Store. If you are using Android, you can, use, you can go to Play Store and download Google Authenticator app. Also, make sure you have ePL uh, rep uh, repository installed in your CentOS 8 remote machine. So, in this, mach uh, in this demo, we are going to use T-Rex and make sure that yum-y install ePL-release. Okay, so we, have, we already have that. Also, make sure that in our SSH configuration file, we have challenge, challenge response authentication set to yes. So these are some prerequisites. Okay. And also please note for this demo, I have enabled permit root login because I'll be using root to log into uh, this remote system. However, you can disable it and use it for uh, a normal non-root user as well. Okay, going out of the system. Now, what is uh, next? We need to make sure that we update the system. So let's update, yum-y update. Okay, good. Our system is updated. Then we need QREN code. Uh, we need to install QREN code. And basically, QRN code enables us to show, it will enable to uh, show QR code on CLI or the command line. Also, make sure you have installed libpng. Okay, perfect. So I have QRN code already installed, libpng already installed. Make sure your date and time are set. This is very important. Otherwise, you will be having issue with Google synchronization. Okay, so my... Uh, date and time are set and they are a minute short with Google actually so I'll just make sure that they are updated so I'll be using 2114 okay what next we need to make sure that, okay, time and date are set. Now we will be installing our Google Authenticator. yum y install Google-Authenticator. Authenticator. Okay, perfect. Now we can go to our lib64 uh, security. And over here, let me clear the screen. You can see that pam underscore Google Authenticator dot so is here. Just copy it. And we will go to etc ssh, uh, sorry, pam.d sshd. And on the very first line, we will write auth required, required pam Google authentication. So, okay, this is important. Save and exit. Uh, please make sure you have typed correctly because pam will take effect immediately still date and time okay perfect date and time is fine now what's next now I am going to make sure that my Google app uh, is started I have already started my Google app and now I will write Google Authenticator on my machine uh, for this demo I'm going to make it uh, the uh, I'm going to maximize the screen because you will see in a moment why it's required uh, 
Do you want authentication token to be time-based? Yes. And now you can see the QR code on our CLI. And now I'm going to add it, scan the QR code, and you just heard the beep. So I've added it successfully. Now I need to type the code what I just received, and it's two, okay, it just changed six, one, six, zero, seven, eight. Press enter, six, one, six, zero, seven, eight. Okay, it's typing, it's telling me it's wrong. And the reason is, I think it's again time and date. But again, let me try it one more time. The new code. You have to wait a minute. Seven, three, six, zero, one, nine. Okay, so it's telling me it's wrong code. That's why I need to make sure that date and time is properly set date. I think it's, again, I need to set up the date and time. So let's try it. Okay, now let's try again, Google Authenticator, yes. Okay, let me remove this. Okay, scanning again. Okay, scanned. Let's type the code this time. It's 106123. Perfect. Now we were successful. And do you want me to update your? Yes, sure. Do you want to disallow multiple uses? Yes. By default, a new token is generated every, I'm just going to say no to this because you can see from its default size of three permitted codes, the next code to 17 permitted codes, the eight previous codes, and it's going to take like four minutes between the client and server. So I don't, I just don't want it. By default, it's uh, fine for three. No, and if the computer that you are logging into isn't hardened against brute force, yes, sure. You can read this but I know what I'm doing. So that's it. Now let's log into our remote machine from our local machine, which is Linux Mint. So you can see this, uh, cat etc os release. This is our CentOS 8 machine. And now I'm going to log into T-Rex, which has IP address of 150 from my local machine. Okay, no, this is Kali. Okay, let me start one more session. There it is. And you can see that this is our local machine. And it's Linux Mint. Okay, so let's log in. SSH root at 192.168.1.150. Perfect, it's asking for the verification code. And from my Google app, I can see the verification code is 241095. Now it will ask me for the password. And perfect, we are into our T-Rex machine. Let me exit and try again. Again, it's asking for the verification code. Let me add, like this time I'm going to give it a wrong code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see that it just took me to the password screen. However, if I give it the correct password, it's not going to let me in. So perfect guys, this was a fun video and I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something new. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, join our Facebook group, it's LZH Project, and also like me on Twitter and Instagram. All my accounts are LinuxKing77. Thank you and goodbye.